Hello and welcome to this session in which we will dive into the Center for Internet Security Controls, known as CIS Controls. Two prior sessions are very helpful before diving into this session, and that is what is the Center for Internet Security and the implementation groups IG1, IG2, and IG3. Have a basic understanding will be helpful to put things into context when we look at specific controls. Now, no need to memorize the number of controls. We're going to have 18 of them. And there are 153 subcategories called safeguards. Now, for each control, I'm going to show you a few safeguards and tell you under which categories, under which implement implementation group, AG, IG1, IG2, or ID, IG3, the safeguards apply. Again, you don't have to memorize them. You just have to appreciate, understand the controls how what's the main idea what's the main purpose of each control and how does it apply that's the most important thing starting by listing all 18 controls and they are on fr in front of you on the screen in this session we will cover those three controls and i'll try to maybe break them down by three sometime by four sometime by twos and see how it goes but in this session i will focus on those three controls let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with control one, which is inventory and control of enterprise asset. Well, let's just take a look at the title. Inventory of enterprise assets or control of enterprise assets. What are we doing here? We're actively managing what? The asset, the hardware of the company. Tracking, inventorying, tracking all hardware devices on the network. For what purpose? So this way we make sure that only authorized devices are given access. And, pre and any unauthorized and unmanaged devices are found and prevented from gaining any access. So we're only using authorized devices. In other words, we purchase them, we know how they work, they go with our companies. So we know what devices do we have, printers, copiers, laptop, tablets, so on and so forth. So this control focused on managing and securing the organization hardware, and we're gonna look at the software later on, the hardware, the hardware assets to reduce the risk of unauthorized access, data breaches, and other security incidents. Don't worry about the software. We're going to have another control for the software. Actually, that's coming up next. What do we know about inventory and control of enterprise assets? Let's take a look at an example. We have to know the asset inventory, the asset classification, keeping track of the asset, asset control, continuous monitoring, patch management, asset disposal, incident response, and user education. Starting with asset inventory, we have to keep track of our assets. So asset inventory would look something like this. We have the type of the asset, the model, the serial number, warranty information, simply put, just listing the asset. Who's the purchasing agent for this asset? What's the support email in case we have a problem with this asset? And what's the support telephone number? So basically inventorying our assets. Here we have a tablet, Surface Pro 8, their serial number. I just made this up. Uh, the warranty information, you can have many other information about this inventory. Then we have a laptop, Dell 3000, the serial number, so on and so forth. So keep track of your, of your inventory, whether you keep track of your inventory electronically on an Excel sheet, on a piece of paper, <laughs> if you'd like to, that's up to you. So basically, this is what we have to do, keep track of our inventory. Also, we need to classify our assets, categorize asset classification, categorize the assets based on their critically and importance to the business. There are certain assets they contain more sensitive information than other assets. For example, financial servers contain sensitive customer data that might be considered critical asset. We need to know if this asset, for example, here in this table, we can add more data to determine whether this tablet is a critical asset or not. 
while Office Sprinter may be less critical. Actually, Office Sprinter are cl critical as well because eventually you print out information on the printers. But the point is just to kind of make the point that certain assets might be more critical. Obviously, the printer is not as critical as the financial and as the servers. Nevertheless, it's critical. But the point is you have to classify your assets classify your assets. Also, you have to track your asset. Asset tracking. What's asset tracking? Just tracking the life cycle of each asset. This includes recording when the asset is purchased, deployed, moved, or retired. Assign unique identifier, knowing where, where can I find the asset to facilitate tracking. Access control. I should not give access to everyone. Set up controls to ensure that only authorized personnel can access all assets, especially if it's critical assets. Have a system of continuous monitoring. For example, for access control, use technologies like firewalls, intrusion detection system, and access control list. If you don't know what IDS is, eventually we'll talk about firewall, basically not allowing outsider to access certain areas of your assets. Restrict access to specific devices and services. Also, you might have vendors that might have to access the your system, your hardware. The auditors, when they come and audit your company, other third party, you have to keep in mind how should you give them access? Continuous monitoring is important as well. Employ continuous monitoring tools and techniques to detect any unauthorized devices and software on your network. Here we're talking about devices. We'll talk about the software next. For example, use network monitoring tool to identify any rogue devices or unapproved software that's running on our hardware. Other things we need to be aware of, asset disposal, when we get rid of the asset, and we eventually we'll talk about patch management later on in a separate session, that's very important. Asset disposal, when an, when an asset reaches the end of its life cycle, when we dispose of it, if it's a hardware, we wanna make sure we wipe all the data to prevent data leakage, that's part of this control. Follow industry best practices for hardware disposal, and for what purpose? To make sure the data is erased, it cannot be recovered. Incident response. Develop an incident response plan that include procedure for responding to security incidents related to unauthorized or compromised asset. This should include isolating and mitigating the threat. User education applies to all, to all controls. Train employees on the importance of asset control and risk associated with unauthorized hardware and software installation on these hardware and encourage them to report any suspicious activities or devices. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take you to the CIS website and show you certain safeguards that falls under control one, just to kind of give you an idea. These controls, how do they apply? How do they apply in the real world? Or what's the suggestions by the CIS? And to which implementation group do they do they apply? Certain controls apply maybe to one, group one, certain to group two, one and two, and some to group one, two, and three. So looking at the CIS actual controls, this is control one, inventory and control of enterprise asset. Let's look at their safeguards. Again, here are some specific safeguards. Remember there are 153 subcategories or safeguards. And this these are the safeguards that goes under control one. For example, establish and maintain detailed enterprise asset inventory. And they tell you what does that mean? Who would this step or safeguard applies to? It applies to IG1, IG2, and IG3. Simply put, all companies will have to do that. Regardless of your size, you have to establish and maintain a detailed enterprise. Keep track of your inventory, of your hardware. Duh, of course it applies to everyone. Address unauthorized access, 1.2. Well, this applies also to all of them. You want to make sure a process exists to address unauthorized access on a weekly basis or daily basis, depending on your need, and this applies to all. Let's see what applies to only group three. Use, use a passive asset discovery tool. For example, using a passive asset discovery tool is an advanced technique that applies only to IG3, IG group three. Use a passive discovery tool to identify assets connected to the enterprise network, review and use scans to update the enterprise asset inventory at least weekly or more frequently. Then we have two safeguards that applies to IG2, which is it means IG1 and IG, IG1 and IG2. Uh, if it applies to two, it means it applies to two and three. Uh, for example, you utilize an active discovery tool. 
use dynamic host config configuration protocol and log into update enterprise asset inventory. Those applies to two. What should you do? Like, how should you prepare for this? I will make sure to know what are the basic ones and what are the advanced one, the two extreme. And something in between, hopefully you can use your common sense. But those are some of the safeguards. Do you have to know this? It's hard to tell. <laughs> We're going to have to wait until the IC information system and control exam started to, re to release questions. But I think you should know what I put on the PowerPoint and have a good idea about the safeguards. I will make sure you can download this. I'll also make it available to you. It's from the uh, from the CIS critical security controls. You could you could you could uh, you could view the actual one. Now moving to control number two, which is inventory and control. It's the same thing of, rather than hardware, software asset. What does that mean? Actively manage all software on the network. Control one was actively manage all the hard, hard, hardware. Now it's the software. So that only authorized software is installed and executed and that unauthorized and unmanaged software is found and prevented from installation or execution. I, this summarized the whole thing. Let's look at software, starting with software inventory. Cre Start by creating a comprehensive inventory of all software installed across all organization system. You want to know which software do you have, therefore you will protect. Make sure you, they're up to date. This includes operating systems, productivity software, database management system, security application, and any other software used within the organization. Make a list of them. Make sure you know what you have. It's better to use automated software inventory tool to facilitate this process. You could use an Excel, whatever you need to do to make sure you're aware. Just that's the first thing. Then you want to classify your software by sensitivity. Categorize your software asset based on their cr criticality, sensitivity, and relevance to the organization. Some softwares like electronic health record may be considered critical, while others like productivity tools, Word document, Excel, may be less critical. So you want to know which as which software are more critical than others. Make sure you are using authorized software list. Develop and maintain a list of authorized software that's approved for use within the organization. Know which software are authorized. This list should specify the versions and configuration that are allowed. And any software that's not on the list should be treated as unauthorized. We don't have the software. Also, you want to make sure you update your software on a regular basis. Implement a controlled process for deploying and updating software. Authorized software should be distributed through control channels and updates should be applied promptly to address security vulnerabilities. Simply put, make sure your software is up to date. Automate patch management, which will help you on this. Again, we'll talk about patch management in a separate recording. Simply put, you're updating the software properly. We'll talk about that later. What else do we need to know about soft software control or inventory and control of software asset is software removal and whitelisting. Whitelisting in contrast to blacklisting. Blacklisting is, we cannot use this. It's blacklisted, it's not acceptable. So on a regular basis, review and uninstall any unauthorized or necessary software. You should do this on your computer on a regular basis. Implement a whitelisting to allow only approved software to run on critical systems. So you know which software it's approved. Whitelisting can be achieved through application control solution. No software is allowed if it's not approved. Also, you want to make sure you have the license to use the software. Maintain an accurate and up-to-date record of software licenses to ensure compliance with the vendor's terms and conditions. This includes tracking the number of the license, how many we can use, what's the expiration dates, the availability, so on and so forth. For control two, we have to Run vulnerability management. Continuously monitor software for known vulnerability. How do we do this? Vulnerability scanning tool can help identify weaknesses in software application and alert us to apply patches, which is fixes, to mitigate risks accordingly. Having an incident response. What does that mean? Well, you have a plan that includes procedures for handling if something happened related to unauthorized or vulnerable software. We need to keep track of this. This way we can isolate the issue and fix it, apply, apply the necessary safeguards remediation. Now let's take a look at actual safeguards that deal with control two from the actual center of internet security. So these are some of the safeguards that applies to control, control number two. Well, the first one, as we mentioned, establish and, and maintain a software inventory. 
Well, all groups, IG1, IG2, it's simply put all companies, they need to keep track of their software. Ensure authorized software is currently supported. The software that we are using, we, we could have support for it because if we don't have support and something happened, uh, there's nothing we can do. And this applies to all groups. Address unauthorized software, very similar to control one. This applies to all companies. You wanna make sure only people who are authorized to access the software are authorized. Now, what allow to, what belong to group three, only group three? Allow list authorized script. Use technical controls such as digital signatures and version control to ensure that only authorized scripts such as specific PS1, so on and so forth are allowed to execute. Here we're talking about advanced techniques. And anything in between, like utilize automated software inventory tools. So rather than just keeping the inventory, you know, on an Excel sheet or paper and a pencil, you might want to use, if you're IG2, you want to utilize automated software inventory tools to keep track of this. Allow list authorized software. Use technical controls. Allow listing to ensure that only authorized software can be executed. This is maybe belong to group G IG2. Maybe IG1 don't need this. I mean, if they, if they can't afford it, why not? But that's the recommended. Allow list authorized libraries. Same thing. It, it belongs to group to group two. Let's see if there's any more. No, there's not any more. So just to kind of give you an idea about the safeguards that goes under control two. Let's move on to control three, which is data protection. <laughs> what does that mean? Ensure that sensitive data is identified and properly protected through its life cycle, including data at rest, data in transit, and data in use. This control is critical. Why? Because data is no longer contained within the enterprise. Data is shared with partners, customers, vendors, we have it online, and it could be anywhere in the world if we have our data in the cloud. So data privacy has become increasingly important. And that's why on the CPA exam, we're, we're, we're testing this topic. That's why we're learning this. That's the whole purpose of it. And enterprises are learning, companies are learning that privacy is about the appropriate use and management of data, not just encryption. So we have to be very careful about how we handle data privacy. That's important. To meet protection and privacy compliance, organization must look beyond traditional cybersecurity method and focus on proper data collection, use, management, retention, and more. And this is what this control kind of advise us to do. So one thing is data classification. Same thing. Remember, we classify our hardware, software. We also classify our data. How do we classify it? Based on its sensitivity and criticality, how important it is. Financial data, such as customer account information and transaction record, might be considered highly sensitive and should receive the highest level of protection. We should encrypt the data in transit, so in case it was intercepted, well, no one can read it, whether it's in intercepted internally or externally. For example, you can use protocols such as HTTPS for web traffic, VPNs, virtual private network for remote access, TSL, SSL for securing email communication. Again, we'll talk about those in separate recordings. This ensures that even if intercepted, the data remains unreadable to the party that access it. Also, encryption data addressed. Well, in transit, we have to encrypt it. Also, in case our database or our servers was penetrated by an outsider, by hackers, you encrypt sensitive data. So they have it, but they cannot read it. So full disk encryptions for laptop and mobile devices in case someone lost their laptop, their mobile device, in case of theft, in case of loss. Also encrypting database containing sensitive financial information. Also from an access point, you have to have good control. Enforce strict, not anyone can access this. Limit the data to the people who are supposed to use it. Implement, it's called role-based access control, RBAC, to ensure that only authorized people have permission to access and modify sensitive information. Also, we have to have a data loss prevention, DLP, DLP solution that can monitor and prevent unauthorized transfer of sensitive data. And in case it happens, we can retrieve it. Somehow we have a backup. Those tools can detect and block attempted to send sensitive information outside the organization. For example, I remember one time my banker um, trying to email me. I was just sitting across the, across the, uh, across the desk from them. And when they put my banking information in the email, the email wouldn't go through because it has my account information. This is basically protection the data, data loss prevention, whether through email, 
file sharing or other communication channel. So how did they get this information for me? Well, they send me an encrypted message and they send me the key. So I had to open the message, use the key to open the message because they could not just send me the email. Secure backup and recovery. Ensure the data backup are also encrypted and stored securely. And we're going to talk a lot about backup in case something happened to the information. On a regular basis, test data recovery procedures to verify that encrypt, encrypted backup can be successfully restored in case of a loss or a disaster. Login and monitoring. Implement robust login and monitoring. Monitor what's going on to detect suspicious or unauthorized access to sensitive data. You want to, on a regular basis, scan the network, see if there's any unusual activities, look in your database, look at the login, see who logged in, how long they stayed, are they supposed to be there, set up alerts and triggers to notify security personnel of any unusual activities like 3 a.m. in the morning, why is someone accessing the database? Also incidents re response place developed just like with the software and hardware, you have an incident response, obviously education, this includes steps for notifying affected parties and regulatory authorities if needed because if you have a breach, you have to notify them. And let's take a look at few CIS safeguards from the real world to give you an idea who uses that data protection and at what level. For example, what would IG1 group need to do versus IG3, the most sophisticated groups when it comes to data protection. For the data protection, we're gonna have many, many safeguards. Let's see what applies to all IG1, IG2, and IG3, establish and maintain a a data management process just like what do I have just basically keep an inventory of it establish and maintain data inventory this applies to IG123 IG123 configure data access control list configure data who can use it on a need to know basis and who cannot to protect the data this applies to one two and three enforce data retention you know how long should I keep this for how long and how much of it should I keep this applies to all organization IG group one, two, and three. Secure disposed of data. When you get rid of the data, the hard drive, make sure it's secure. This applies to all companies. Encrypt the data on end users devices. This applies to all. Now, establish a data classification scheme. Yeah, for example, IG1 may not have to do that, but IG2 and IG3 will have to do that. Document data flows, IG2 and I IG3. Encrypt data on removable media, IG2 and IG3. Let's let's see what belongs to IG3. Deploy a data loss prevention solution. Here you have a data prevention that's very advanced. This is for companies that belongs to IG3. Their data is so critical. Lock sensitive data access or segment data processing and storage based on sensitivity. This belongs to IG2 and IG3. So again, my suggestion is to just kind of take a look at what's common to all three and what's, what's specific to IG3 and kind of common sense will be in between. That's my strategy. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. Which action is relevant to managing hardware assets in business organization? All right, so managing hardware, regularly updating software to the latest version. That's a great, that's a great thing make sure your software is updated, but it has nothing to do with managing hardware asset. When you have to understand the difference between hardware and software, I hope we know the difference. Identifying and securing disposing of retired hardware. We're getting rid of our hard drive or computers, laptop. Is this part of managing hardware? I would say this is a good answer. Why? Because you want to make sure if it falls in the wrong hands, they cannot retrieve any information or data from that hardware. But let's look at C, encrypting sensitive customer data during transmission. Yes, that's, that's a good practice, but that's not part of managing the hardware, making sure that if someone intercepted the data, they cannot read it. That's a great, great practice, but it's not managing hardware. That's also out. It's a correct statement, just not what we are looking for. Training employees on cybersecurity best practices. Yes, that applies to all controls. It's within all controls. Training employees on software management, hardware management, all sorts of management, change management, best security, best cybersecurity practices. But it's not specific for answering this question, managing hardware, managing hardware asset. Therefore, D is out. As I predicted, B is the best answer. B is the best answer. 
what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs to try to learn, to practice, to put your knowledge to test. Invest in yourself, invest in your CPA exam. The CPA is 20 to 30 year investment in your career. Don't shortchange yourself, it's worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.